Hello everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I'm going to talk about Qimen chart basics. So this just gives you a general overview. It's not going to help you do anything, but you need to understand the basics before I think you can actually use any charts. I do want to say I am not a Qimen or Bata expert or even close. I have taken a Qimen course before, but never a Batsa course. Uh, but I do know how to use some of the information that comes from it. And that's basically what I'm going to talk about. If you want to have a Batsa analysis or a Qimen analysis, you need to go to somebody who actually does this for a living. I am not capable of doing this. I do think understanding your Qimen natal chart is quite useful. And for me, I think that the data is more readily accessible than looking at the Batsa. Uh, you've only got eight characters in the Batsa. Um, and you have to look at all these combinations. And there's a lot of work you have to do to understand what the Batsa chart means. Uh, whereas with the Chiman chart, uh, each square has five or six or even eight different characteristics associated with it. So you have eight times how, how many up to eight. So that's like 64 pieces of information you can use. So uh, that you don't have to figure out. But I'm sure that the Batsa experts would disagree with me. And I'm okay with that because I really don't know Batsa. But like I say, I, I can see that data. I don't have to do any calculations to figure it out. That's why I think the Chima natal chart is more useful. Now, Chima Dunja has several different charts. There is the Chima Feng Shui chart, which I've already discussed and have a video out for. Uh, there's the Chima natal chart, which is usually called the destiny chart. Now, I don't like the word destiny chart because the natal chart is not your destiny just like the Bata is not your fate and even Joey Yap who calls it the destiny chart does stress that your Bata is not fate while your destiny chart is not your destiny so I call it natal chart you also have year month day and hour charts and you may even have some breakdowns smaller than that or but you have to figure them out yourself. Uh, but there are many places where you can get at least the hour charts for free, um, but usually only the current hour chart. So it's a little bit of a pain. But these charts affect or apply to everybody equally, but their effects might not be equal. And that's because there are interactions between your natal chart and these timed charts. And so the effects can be different. The hour chart is also used for some special purposes. Uh, there's something called Qimen forecasting, um, sometimes called divination. Uh, they're really the same thing. Uh, and and uh, the key here is you have to properly determine the focus sector. Actually, interpreting a chart is, uh, especially if you're trying to do a forecasting, the interpretation isn't terribly difficult. The hard thing is making sure you've decided on which sector is the important sector. And that will depend on what the question is. So this takes a lot of practice to get right. And um, I have done this for one single person um, beyond myself as an individual, which um, it's much easier to do it for somebody else than yourself. But uh, it, it seems to be holding true. And that was um, maybe five years ago that uh, I did that, um, did the chart. And it's still holding true. So uh, it's, uh, it, it, I may be able to do this, but I, I don't want to do this um, because it's, a lot of work. Uh, now, the, there's also something called, often called Warcraft, strategic execution, all kinds of things. But basically, 
you're using the exact same chart. You still have to determine the focus sector properly, but you also have to determine with all that information, you've got like eight different pieces of information in each box. Uh, when you're trying to get something done, you have the starting sector and you have your goal. And you use the elemental pathway to get there if, if it doesn't work out directly. And that's what you use this strategic usage of Qimin for. Uh, you, but you got in each one of those boxes, you've got eight different pieces of information you can use, and you've got to pick the right one out of that in order to be able to win at what you're trying to do. So this is the most difficult one. The, the strategic execution is very, very hard. The, the forecasting is difficult, but it's not as difficult as this. Uh, the natal chart is much easier, and the feng shui chart is also quite easy. Now, um, qi, uh, Qimin manifestation is also a key feature of the Qimin Dunja school. Uh, it, is, it can be very, very useful, and I have a separate video about this. The, there are a number of sources for Qimin charts, which I recommend that you actually use a source for this and you don't bother to try to calculate it yourself. It's very difficult to do. Um, so just use the sources of information that are out there. Joey Yap has a free version for your natal uh, chart, which he calls destiny chart. And he does some things that others don't. And the nice thing is that it is free, but you can only really get your destiny chart free. Uh, he also does give a on a different website or different page. He does give you the current hour chart, but that doesn't do most people very much good. Um, uh, unless you're looking for a very specific thing. Now, he denotes the constellations and a something called what he calls a seven star level. Uh, the constellations are the stars, you know, the star constellations, but they're not the ones that we know in the West. They are Chinese versions of the constellations. Now, the seven star level is very mysterious. He has not publicly described how he gets this. And no one outside the Joey Yap group seems to really use this. Now, maybe it's because I'm a scientist, but if somebody is being mysterious about this, my scan meter goes way up. And, and if you can't explain it, or you're unwilling to explain it, I want to know why. Of course, maybe this is just because you want to keep a secret. Well, I don't think I'm going to use it if it's not worth people knowing. So I don't I don't hold a lot of trust in the seven star level, uh, but it can be used. I don't think it is harmful to use, but I don't know that it's good to use either. So it's very hard for me to judge. Now, the one thing good about the Joey website is that the entities, the stars, the doors, the, the, uh, the spirits, which he calls deities, uh, and the elements, they're all color-coded. If it's red, it's positive. If it's black, it's negative. But if you're looking at your natal chart, he doesn't switch those color schemes. But um, all of the spirits are generally looked at in a positive light for a natal chart. You just have to be cognizant of that. So you ignore the red-black for the what he calls deities, what I call spirits. The Chinese Metasoft site actually has a more complete list of properties. I actually like this site a little better. Unfortunately, it's not free, but there are some very cheap um, one month subscriptions. And uh, there's also uh, a trial period if you have, uh, if it's the first time you're there. So you can get, a, if you're talking about your natal chart, you can get what you need. Uh, otherwise, if you want to do more with this, like the three 
uh, the three victories days, you're going to need a subscription. And the year subscription for this site is only $68. And it's not cheap, but it's also not that expensive. And it's a whole lot less expensive than the Joey app site. If you want his full stuff, you pay in $2,000 a year. That's outrageous, actually. Um, now, this one also gives you hexagrams, which Joey app does not. And this gives you extra things like your parent and your sibling sector. Uh, it gives you um, a few other sectors that are not listed in the free version of the Joey app destiny chart. Now, when you enter your time and date of birth uh, on, on the Chinese Metasoft site, make sure you click Destiny on the type of chart. So you'll be adding, you, you put in your time and date of birth, and you have to pick your year and your month first, and then you click on the day, because it'll bring up a little calendar. And then the next thing over, you enter the time, and then the one to just to the right of that, you, uh, you pick your chart type and you want to pick destiny. Now, if you do both of these charts, you get a pretty well-rounded understanding of your natal challenge and, and limitations. It's, it's, I like to use both um, uh, for when I'm doing my own family. Uh, I, again, I don't do this for the general public because I'm not good enough yet. But you can also print out both of these charts, either on paper or as a PDF, and, uh, and this allows you to keep it. Now, it's not a bad idea to do these every year, um, especially the Joey App one, because he does some analysis for the year that I'm not 100% sure that the Chinese Metasoft site does. But uh, this can give you how the year is interacting with you. And I would recommend that you do print out the charts so that you have them to refer to, either again on paper or in your computer. And uh, both of these sites will tell you your guardian sector. It will give you a location. And uh, this is where your guardian spirit will be located and all of your guardian elements too. That is your stars and stems and, and uh, doors. Well, actually, star, stem, star stems and door you've got two stems and one door and one star and it also would tell you your three victories directions and i'm going to have a video out about your, using your three victories uh, this is quite good um, to use these days when you can now the chiman chart has these following elements. You have a spirit, which is often called a god. I mean, they sometimes say 10 gods. Um, they also call deities. Some people may even call them energies. I like the word spirit because it has less to do with religion. When you say god, you think religion um, in too many places. Uh, now, this is a connection to the universe, something beyond the earth. It's largely used for manifestation direction um, in kind of day-to-day -day life, but this sometime is the focus when you're looking at uh, a, a, um, a, a um, forecast chart. And then you have a door, and that's related to what actions you should take um, if you're trying to do something. Uh, that's again for forecasting, but it also represents something in your natal chart too. And I will have a video about the natal chart that will hopefully clear a lot of this up. But this is usually used for activations of something. Then you have the stars. Uh, this connects to things beyond individuals control, but perhaps the crowds control this. Uh, for example, um, many countries track something called consumer sentiment or consumer confidence, something like that. Uh, and of course, if consumer confidence is high, that means people are more willing to buy things, so the economy tends to be better. That's why it's a real important thing. But they look at it as a whole. 
and uh, and your individual confidence may be very far from what the consumer confidence is, and um, and th this is an example where you don't have control, but your fellow people in your country can, can control, or even in the world. Now, this influences the environment you happen to be in. And uh, this can vary from country to country, um, from neighborhood to neighborhood even. Then you also have the earth and the heaven stems. These are elements. And they usually represent people in your life. Now, in your natal chart, they're, they're used, but only for identifying certain sectors, as far as I can tell. Uh, they are used in other charts, but it depends. If you're talking about forecasting chart, it depends whether or not you're talking about a person. If you're talking about a person, then yeah, you definitely use this in a forecast chart. Now, um, then you have these other things like the hexagram, the seven star level, the constellations. Now, again, the seven star level is really not discussed by anybody but Joey Yap, and he doesn't really explain it very well. But these things tend to be let's say, just a little bit used. It's not the most important thing. So if you're missing this, usually you don't have to worry about it. It's okay. Whether it's in your natal chart or your forecast chart, these things just aren't that important. Now, this is something that um, if you realize this, it makes you understand the limitations of both the Batsa and the Chiman when it comes to your natal charts. There are roughly 30,000 people who were born in the exact same period of time. That is, they will have the identical Chiman chart, the identical Batsa chart that you have. But the life of these 30,000 people can be very, very different. Some don't some have fantastic lives, some have really crappy lives. And so you might wonder why. Now, there are reasons why this can happen that don't have anything to do with your birth charts. Their willpower is important, and this is not necessarily uh, determined by your, your Batsa or your achievement chart. There probably is something there, but there's so many other things that can affect this uh, that that it, it, it's, uh, let's say, that these charts only give you an, a rough idea. Also, the connections that you make, or really that your parents make also, they can make a big, big difference in your life. So things for like which country you were born in. If you're born in a poor country, you're not going to have as many opportunities uh, in general. Your chances just aren't as good as if you were born in a wealthier country. Your parents' education and connections are really crucial. This is where your connections start. What your parents do for a living is also important because this is where you're going to get your connections that can change your life. Now, you might get lucky. Uh, maybe whether or not your parents have used feng shui, it doesn't really matter. If you were lucky enough to sleep as a ch I'm mostly talking as a child. If you were lucky enough to sleep in a bedroom and work in a location that was good for either your likability or your resolve or your uh, intelligence, you know, how, how well you take in information, this, you just might be lucky that this is where you were put by your parents to do, to sleep and to work and to study. So uh, sometimes you just get lucky with this. And it may only affect you and not affect everybody else in the house. Because these things are specific to your chart, where these locations can be in your house. There's also some sort of innate level of desire and commitment to improve your life. It's basically how tough you are. Sometimes it just takes one experience to change this. And 
this is why you can have one person in a family be a lot more successful than everybody else and even more successful than a twin although they tend to bring the twin along because twins are usually pretty close but sometimes it just doesn't work that way uh, but this can explain why one child is a lot more driven than another even though they're brought up by the same parents um, and your upbringing does make a difference if your parents are very uptight you might rebel and go the opposite direction and be a lot more relaxed that can have an effect if your parents were very relaxed uh, you you might again rebel and become a much stronger um, de determined person so it, it it's a very strange combination of the upbringing and your natural uh, level and some of your experiences all go into what's going to happen here. If you've been uh, uh, someone who has experienced trauma or abuse, this really limits your ability to do very well um, because these experiences can have a long lasting negative effect. And if you've experienced this, of course, everybody experiences some trauma, but I'm talking about repeated trauma uh, and physical or any of the other abuses. Uh, you get help. Find somebody to talk to. There are free sources out there uh, if, if you don't have um, the ability to afford them. They're often church related, but you want to find someone that you can say to them, even if they're church affiliated, look, I don't believe in God, don't talk to me like that. If you do, I'll just walk out. Most, but not all, most of these people will still be willing to help you. Uh, and you do want to find someone who isn't going to push their religion on you uh, because that should be your own free choice. Uh, so, you know, you can get help for this often for free. And you can, if you get a really good friend, they can help too. So this one is something that you can actually do something about. Your upbringing, you can't do much about. At this innate level, you, you yeah, it's kind of just the way you are, or at least the way you start out. This is not, I mean, you can change, but you have to decide to change. And, uh, but this is the one that you can really do something about that can really improve your life. Now, there can be accidents and mishaps. This could happen to you or your family members that change your upbringing or even your entire life. So this, the, you know, that's bad luck. Let's put it that way. Sometime you can also just get lucky. You can be in the right place at the right time, uh, just meet the right people and just get lucky. But you shouldn't count on luck because most people are not that lucky. So I'm going to tell you about uh, the different spirits and doors and stars and gems and all this stuff. Uh, generally, this is color-coded, red being positive, black being negative, but it depends on what you're doing, whether or not it's positive or negative or how you're using it. So the of the spirits, we have these 10. You are going to have eight in your natal chart, and in every chart, there'll only be eight. But uh, they, these are in everybody's chart, and the snake will be in everybody's chart, and every time chart, too. But you're going to have either the phoenix and the hook, or you will have the tiger and the tortoise. You never, you don't mix it any other way. And uh, it depends on the time of the year that the chart refers to, which mix you'll have. And if you're looking at your natal chart, your guardian spirit is always uh, looked at in a positive sector or a positive way. That is, depending on which one of these uh, guardian spirits you have, they will have some special skills that go along with them, even when they're in this negative column. So they're not really negative for natal chart reading. 
Then you have the doors, and this in general is positive, this is negative. But if you're looking to learn something new, the delusion door is good. Now, this is sometimes called closed door. So if you're looking at a different site and you see closed, it means delusion. But in the Joey App site and the uh, Chinese Metasoft site, they use the word delusion. That's why I'm using it here. If you're in the witness protection program, you don't want to be in the scenery door because people will notice you, including people you don't want them to. So the scenery door is usually considered positive, but it can have negative. When it comes to the stars, you usually only see these eight stars. The bird is only sometimes there, and as far as I can tell, it's always with the grain. Uh, it does help um, if you have the grain there uh, in a reading because, uh, I mean, you have the bird there with the grain as opposed to the grain without the bird uh, in, in like a uh, forecast reading or even in your birth chart because that helps improve this because this is positive, this is negative. Now the grass is tricky. It's, it can have some positive, there's some real positives about it, but there's also a lot of danger along with the positives that if you don't do it properly, you can get into a lot of trouble. So it's kind of in the middle. And oftentimes it's considered one of the more negative ones because you have to use this with great care. When you're talking about the stems, uh, you will have one will be a heaven stem, one will be an earth stem, but they'll all be one of these 10 stems. And the first half the, is positive. The second half is, is uh, usually considered negative. And this starts with yang wood, yin wood, yang fire, yin fire. So this is in the growth cycle. And so it's pretty easy to remember this. But if you look at the Joey App site, it's going to give you um, the, uh, uh, it will give you a um, actual color-coded reading. Now, you're never going to see Ja uh, as, as a big character in your chart because Chimen Dunja, the Dunja part means the hidden Ja. This, it will always go with the uh, chief, but uh, and some and it's usually listed on the chart, but it's a very tiny little character, a little hard to read. It is there, but it's not really, really there. I mean, it, it it's it's a bit strange. Nothing to worry terribly about. But if you don't see it in your chart, don't worry about it. So in the two uh, things that I talked about, the the Chinese Metasoft and the Joy website. They arrange their um, entities in this order. The spirit or deity is in the upper right. The star is in the middle on top and the door is in the bottom. And then you've got the heaven stem over the earth stem on the left. Now, other places where you can get a, even free Chimen charts, they may not be in this order. Uh, so you... It, and most of them are Chinese websites, so if you can read the Chinese, you can still use them. But, uh, you know, it's more work. And in the center sector, so you'll have, you'll have nine boxes or nine sectors, just like you do with the low shoe and all that. And uh, the center one will only have the, the stems. And sometimes they only list one stem because I think they're always the same. Uh, but... That's not a big deal. So the natal locations of the elements like the stars and the doors are important in, in some aspects in terms of there will be something called Fu Yin and Fan Yin charts. You will hear this. And if it's Fu Yin, it is exactly in this order for the, for the stars, exactly in this order for the doors. And of course, this can be one or the other. Now, this, the uh, Fan Yin is totally opposite. So the heart and the assistant are opposite. The destruction and pillar switch, the grain and the ambassador switch. Now, the bird here is, so I've heard it listed in the center. 
and, and maybe that's where the actual location is. It, this is a little vague. The bird isn't used a lot, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't show up in most charts. Every chart that I've seen it show up has always shown up with the grain. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that's always true, but I've been through quite a few charts and I've never seen it anywhere but with the grain. Now, the when it comes to the stems, this one is the one that makes the most sense. I mean, the, the doors and the stars, eh, well, this is just the way it is. But this makes a lot of sense. The uh, Instead of, we know that both of these are wood, we know both of these are metal, and we know these three diagonally here are earth. But just make it easy and just put them in a, a nice little cross shape. So we have both the yang and the yin wood with the wood in the east. Now this is exactly how they're going to show up on your chart. They'll have the romanization underneath the Chinese character. And so you want to look at the, um, uh, you know, get used to the names because you're not going to see Yang Wood listed. And of course, in most chart, this is hidden. It's small and really hard to see. But uh, you have here 10 elements and uh, you will have an element listed here in the center that does a lot to define the, um, uh, the actual um, chart. It's uh, not the full indication of what the chart is, but it's that class of the chart. And it will, it, I think it will always be the same on top and bottom, but you won't have the same on top and the bottom in a real chart for the rest of these sectors. But uh, this one, only the only information in this is usually the two stems. The rest of these boxes have all of these. Uh, you've got the stars and the stems and the doors and, uh, uh, and often some little other information depending on which source you're using. So uh, anyway, th this is this com becomes very important when these stems move to other locations because you can look at this in an elemental point of view. That is, if, the, if uh, a metal element is here, well, that's fine because they're friends. You know, it's the same element. It'll be weakened if it's in water. Uh, it'll be countered if it's uh, in, uh, in the south because fire melts metal. So you can look at it in that way. The only weird one is uh, usually the, um, for, for metal, is these two. One, it, it produces it, and the other, it's, it's called grave, like it never, it never changes. So uh, I will talk about that more in, in the future, and if you're really interested in it now, uh, Kevin Chan, I believe that's his name, uh, has videos that talk all about this, all about the um, various uh, ways to look at this. So, uh, and also these guys here too, actually have an elemental association. And this, of course, is all to do with the low shoe. And so you can look at the, the open door in various places just the same way that you would look at a metal, um, because this is the metal sector. So it's actually quite complicated, especially when you're doing uh, forecasting. It's not so important when we're doing uh, um, destiny or natal charts. The, there's a, actually a very big difference in the way you interpret them. Now, when it comes to the spirits, it's a little bit more complex. You've got a yang set and you've got a yin set. In the yang set, you'll have the phoenix and the hook. In the yin set, you'll have the tiger and the tortoise. And the dividing line between these two appears, to the best of my knowledge, to be the summer and winter solstice times. Not just the dates, but the times. So if you were born after winter solstice, but before summer solstice of the next year, then you use the yang set. 
if you were born after the summer solstice but before the winter solstice of any given year, you use the yin set. Uh, so it's pretty simple. Uh, and this is the things that you need to know. Now, you'll never have the phoenix and the tiger or the phoenix and the tortoise or the hook and the tortoise or the hook and the tiger. It'll be phoenix and hook or tiger and tortoise. Uh, I've never seen it be any other way. Now, the natal structures are most important in understanding how to do a forecast or divination or strategic execution uh, in Shiman. This it can affect your um, it can affect your your the reading of your natal chart too, but it's not necessarily that important. Uh, it, it's uh, you read. You read the natal chart in a completely different way than you read a forecast chart. Now, there is a concept of fanyin and fuyin, which you should understand because you will hear these terms quite a bit. They represent the opposite arrangement or the identical arrangement, with the opposite being fanyin, the identical being fuyin, of the natal locations of these elements and the doors are the one that you hear a lot about but you can have this with your stems uh, you can have this with your uh, door uh, your doors or your your stars or your even your um, uh, your deities or your spirits so uh, they do have meaning even in a natal chart reading now the Fanyan and Fuyin conditions can affect your forecast readings, your strategic, and even the natal chart interpretations. So this is something important to know, and that's why I've given you all these charts so you have something to refer to. Now, the natal locations of all those entities we talked about, um, not really the stems, but the doors, the stars, and the spirits, they're based on the Loshu elements. You know, what is in, in that natal location you know, what is there in the Loshu as an element. So it gets assigned an element to it just to understand how it interacts, not that this is an element that you use um, for anything other than interpretation. Uh, the location of these, L, these entities, the doors, the stars, the spirits, in a reading of in our chart or, or your natal chart, this can be interpreted using the elemental cycles. So for example, if you had your open door, I think it's original palace is earth, but I'm not sure, can't remember, but let's say it's earth. Well, if, um, if it's in a water location, it's controlling the water. If it's in a metal location, it's feeding the metal. Uh, if it's in a fire location, it's being fed by the fire. So that's the idea. You use the elemental cycle to understand what it means in that particular location. Now, the combination of the two stems, which they they don't they're not always the same. The top and bottom are not the same for every every um, chart. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But they. Um, they create yet another set of interpretations. And there are 10 stems, and they can be in any kind of order. So in theory, you have 100 different interpretations, that, depending on the combination. Now, I don't know anybody can remember all of them. Maybe there's some, but I can't. But if you, if you want the ultimate guide, the Qimin Dunja Compendium by uh, Zhou Ye actually gives you all the traditional interpretations of these combinations. Now, you really have to kind of bring those up to date uh, because they're coded um, in terms of what society was like when this was written. So at that time, women were totally subservient to the men. Uh, you know, you weren't supposed to have desires uh, or, or 
goals. Um, everything was supposed to be determined either by your father or your husband or maybe your sons. And uh, that, that, you know, it doesn't jive with today. The thing is, is when they say something about yin or women, it's somebody who is less proactive. It is not necessarily a woman. Uh, that's what I mean, that you have to sort of modernize these interpretations. They're not really directly applicable to today. And they're rather insulting if you read them. Uh, some of them are quite insulting uh, towards women. But again, this was a very sexist society who wrote these rules. So at least you can understand why they're so bad. Now, there may be another book that uh, might be 100 combinations. I mean, that might that's going to be a lot cheaper than this compendium. Now, this compendium actually tells you how to create the charts. It is not easy. Um, but if you're interested, this is the book you need. So that concludes this uh, video. Um, you can leave a comment if you uh, have questions or email me here if you don't want to have it public. Uh, and uh, I also have um, a website that's mostly about feng shui, so it's up to you whether or not you want to look at it. I'd like to thank you again for watching.